Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, so grateful you're here with us today. We're taking a journey verse by verse through the book of Matthew. Hope you'll join us. We just try to explain and have practical applications for every verse in the Bible. We've completed the book of Romans. We're also going through the book of Wisdom, Proverbs. I love the book of Proverbs. And Genesis, the book of beginnings. If you don't know where you came from, you're not going to know where you're going. We're also in the very first gospel. Tax collectors can be saved because Matthew was a tax collector. They really didn't like tax collectors in the first century in the Jewish world. So Matthew 21, verse 12. We're on lesson 55. Do you check out our other 54 uh, lessons? We invite you to do that. We should have a playlist on here with most, if not all of them. hope all of them are in there. So verse 12, Matthew 21 and 12, lesson 55. Again, thanks for being here. Do check out our other videos too. Not just of journey throughs, but all our other ones. And Jesus went into the temple. This is his last week. You know, obviously I say it's his last week. Obviously he's resurrected, so it's not really his last week. But the last week before is he's crucified. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and he was the temple of God, John 2, 19 through 21, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. So look at that. He's going into his father's house. The father was in him, but also the Shekinah glory, just like God's on the throne now, and he's in all of us around the world. He can be in multiple places at once, like his baptism. He's on the throne. He's a voice. His image like a dove. He's in Jesus. Yeah, God can do that. Day of Pentecost, he's in 120 at the same time and still on the throne and cloven tongues like as a fire symbolism. So the temple, he throws them out and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. So what would happen, there was three feasts in the year every Jewish man was required to go to wherever they were in the whole world. And so they had money that wasn't necessarily like shekels or shekels. And so they would come to Jerusalem and they would change out the money there. And uh, people were taking, skimming a little bit. They, the currency exchange wasn't good. And sometimes the doves for their sacrifices, like Luke 1, Luke 2, you know, Jesus and all this, uh, various sacrifices. And uh, he's like, look, my house is a house of prayer. I think that's so fantastic. He didn't say my house is a house of sacrifice because that's kind of how they looked at it. He's like, my house is a house of prayer, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So he overthrew the tables of the money chambers and the seats of them that sold doves. Verse 13, and said unto them, it is written, my house. Now notice how he says this. It is written, and he's quoting scripture, but he could target a lot of scripture quotation in the Old Testament are inexact because they're what would be known as targumed, but this is just how God wanted to inspire it. My house shall be called the house of prayer. So notice he is saying the temple's my house. Because you remember back in Matthew 12, he said the greater than the temple's here. My house is a house of prayer. He's claiming to be God here. It's one of the great oneness passages in the whole Bible showing that Jesus is God, the deity of Jesus passages. My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Verse 14, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Well, these maybe are unclean or, or something. And so he, he's restoring the temple the way it's supposed to be. It's not a place to make money. It's a place for healing and hope. We take up an offering. We, we believe that. You know, we believe in tithes and offerings. Oh, the house of God's place of healing and hope. Amen. And his house, we're all the temple of God. We're supposed to pray without ceasing. We're, his house is a house of prayer. Among all that, doesn't matter. Jew, Gentile, who? White, black, Hispanic, Asian, American, Indian. Maybe this doesn't matter. So he healed them. Verse 15. And uh, when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, remember his name will be called Wonderful, Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. And the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, which means save now, to the son of David, that's Messiah. They were sore displeased. They're like, mm, don't let them call you Messiah. You're going to cause problems here. And he said unto him, hearest thou what they, these say? And Jesus saith unto them, 
it, it, the people said unto Jesus, Hear thou what these say, the chief priests and all these. And Jesus saith unto them, chief priests and scribes, Yea, have you never read how to the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? That's in Psalms. And so we could go into, because it doesn't say in Psalms, babes and sucklings, but you could go into comparing scripture with scripture there, which is a really good thing to do. Thou hast perfected praise. Or maybe it's perfected praise. Maybe it does say babes and sucklings and Psalms. Maybe it's perfected praise. It doesn't say. But perfected praise. And so we've got to become as little children. And just, Daddy, I trust you. I'm leaving every problem at the door. God, you're going to do it. And that's where praise is perfected. Of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast per, uh, perfected praise. Verse 17, and he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, which was right nearby. This is where Lazarus lived and all this. And he lodged there. Now I'm going to do something real quick because I want to look up that verse in Proverbs. And I'm using a large print text only Bible that doesn't have um, that uh, references in there. But I do that deliberately because. I don't want to kind of get bogged down. I want to just give what God's word says. Yeah, so it's Psalm 8 2. Yeah, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, it does say, uh, babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. Ordained strength, perfected praise. So uh, perfected praise is ordaining strength in our life. And I'd better turn this phone on airplane mode because sure as I don't, somebody's going to call, text or something. So I wanted to just clarify that. Verse 19, And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. A lot of people say that's the Jewish nation. A lot of people say that's the law. It's typological. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. So people say, you know, whenever this was, March, April, that's when the Passover was, th there shouldn't have been fruit on it anyhow. So why was he looking for fruit? Well, there may be some things that we don't know about. Maybe growing seasons were a little different then. Maybe it was different types of fig trees that were all destroyed during the Roman siege. Or maybe he was just using it as an illustration. But the fig tree withers away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? So if it is talking about the law, or talking about you know the Jewish nation, wither away. Now we do know God still loves the Jewish nation, Romans 11, on and on and so forth. But so we're going to stop there. This is Jesus last week. This is his triumphal entry and he's spending his last week as it's called in Jerusalem. So God bless you. Thanks for being here. Join us daily. We'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.